What's up folks, Trip Smith here where my goal is to entertain, educate, and inspire you to get out there and live an adventure. In this video, we're going to be talking about snake bites and why they may not be as much of a threat as we think they are and what you should do if you do get bit by a poisonous snake and what you should not do if you get bitten by a poisonous snake. Now, I've been doing some research and I've found some really good things that are good to know in case you're out there and something goes down that's not planned. Snakes and snake bites. You know, when we go out, you know, we oftentimes see snakes. I know I've seen many, many on my trips. Uh, most haven't been poisonous snakes. A lot have been poisonous. We're always thinking about them, or at least we should always be aware of them and just know what is out there. And a lot of times we may get a little bit of a, you know, not really a necessary fear in our mind. You know, a reality of snake bites is that it's not as bad as reality or uh, people make it out to be. Now certainly snake mites, snake mites, now certainly snake bites can be dangerous, but only about 25% of all snake bites are actually envenomations, which means the venom was actually injected. You know, most bites are either going to be dry bites or either just a small amount of venom is injected. Injected. My goodness, why is that so hard to say? Most snake bites are dry bites, and about 5% of all snake bites are actually lethal. You know, snakes really, they value their venom. You know, that is their, you know, their way to survive. That is how they get their food. And, you know, if they see a big human or something, you know, they're not going to always want to waste their venom on something so large. So a lot of times a venomous snake will actually strike without injecting venom. That's called a dry bite. And also, most snake bites are from people messing with snakes when they shouldn't be. You know, a lot of times if you see a venomous snake, you can just leave it alone and it'll leave you alone. You know, they're not aggressive like a lot of people say they are or think they are. They're just not. But let's say you're out there and you do get bitten. Yes, it does happen sometimes. So what do you do? Well, first and foremost, you know, you want to, of course, stay calm, but you want to separate yourself from the snake, okay? You know, a lot of times a snake will strike because it feels threatened. Well, if you're still there by the snake, it may still feel threatened and it may strike again. And, you know, the first time it could be like a more of a warning strike and it may not have injected venom or used venom. And, but if you uh, spook it or startle it or threaten it again, it may actually inject venom the second time. So separate yourself from the snake. All right, stay calm, you know, keep your heart rate down. That will, you know, help to slow the spread of the venom if you were uh, in, you know, envenomated, I don't know, something, there's some fancy words, but if venom was injected into you, uh, that will slow it down. And also, you know, keep your breathing down, keep your heart rate down, because those things can be early signs of shock, or they can bring on shock, and that's what you don't want. And just like all situations, you know, especially dire situations, you want to stay calm and don't panic. You want to stay thinking clearly, because that's oftentimes what will save your life. Something else you may want to try to do is try to identify the snake. That way, if you do go in uh, to a hospital or something, you can say, okay, this is what the snake looked like, or even better, uh, snap a picture of the snake with your phone. If you can get that close without uh, getting bitten again, you know, snap a picture. So whenever you get to the ER, you can say, look, this is the snake that bit me. <laughs> and that way the doctor will know, you know, what type of um, antivenom and things they will use to treat you. Now, if you're bitten on the hand or the foot, which are fairly common places to be bitten, you know, if you have any shoes or jewelry in these areas, you want to be sure and take those off because a lot of times you'll start to swell. And let's say you have a wedding ring or something on your finger and you get bitten in the hand here or in the wrist, which is a lot of times where you may get bitten uh, and your finger starts to swell with that wedding band on there, you don't want it on there, okay? Take things like that off, all jewelry, anything. Try to immobilize the limb if possible. Most of the time, whenever people do get bitten, it's more than likely going to be on one of your limbs, either your leg or your arm. So just try to keep those things still. You know, if your arm is bitten, you know, maybe uh, tie up a little sling or at least just hold it still. You know, you don't want to agitate this area. The next thing you want to be thinking about is getting to medical help. You know, get to a vehicle and then get to a hospital as soon as possible. You don't always have to call EMS you know, unless you're having an allergic reaction or something else, difficulty breathing. If that stuff starts, okay, call an EMS crew because that is something that they can actually help you with. Uh, and oftentimes you may have to be waiting on an EMS crew to get to wherever you are if you're kind of out in the boonies somewhere and that time could be spent 
getting to the hospital to a doctor. A lot of times the EMS crew, they only have the basic things uh, for life support. You know, they can uh, help you keep breathing and things like that. Well, y'all don't need to know that. <laughs> Other than that, you know, you really just need to be focusing on getting to the hospital uh, the quickest and the easiest way possible, whether that's uh, through your own vehicle or EMS if you need that, which oftentimes I don't think you will. And it's really not going to be that much faster uh, either to call an EMS crew because they can have to come out to you and then transport you in. And a lot of times we can get ourselves to the hospital just as fast as an EMS crew can come to us and then transport us to the hospital. Now, if you are away from your vehicle, like if you're paddling down a river on a three-day trip and this is day two and you're still a long way from your vehicle, okay, you can call EMS, tell them to meet you at the nearest road or the nearest access uh, that you can get to safely and they'll meet you there and then they'll take you to the hospital. <clears throat> That's going to be your best bet then. If you're alone, you just want to stay calm, keep your heart rate down, and just get to help as soon as possible, whatever way that may be. If you're with a group paddling, uh, you know, the person who has been bitten, let's uh, stop them from paddling, let's keep their heart rate down, let's just you know keep them calm, keep them focused on their breathing nice and easy, and let's get them out and get them to a vehicle as soon as possible. If you have the capabilities and the knowledge, you know maybe you could monitor that person's vital signs like their pulse, maybe their breath rate, and you know just keep talking to them, calming them down. Watch for excessive sweating and shallow breathing because these can be signs of shock. And also something you may want to do also is note the time that you were bitten or that whoever was bitten because uh, that would be something handy that you could relay to the doctors whenever you get to the hospital. Okay, so what do you not do if you've been bitten? And there's a lot of things out there that have just been proven not to be very useful, like a snake bite kit or sucking the wound and things like that. Those just aren't smart things to do. So first off, do not cut the wound. Don't try to get the venom out. Don't suck on the wound to try to get the venom out. That's just not a smart thing. Does that sound smart? No, that's not a smart thing. <laughs> Oh! Oh my god! I was bit by a rattler! Oh god! I'm gonna die! Hold on! Hold on! Somebody! Suck out the poison! Please! Oh. He's your friend! I can't speak with them! Hot! Okay. You're just gonna be wasting time because the venom actually has a bonding effect and it will bond to the blood, so you're really doing no good. Do not apply tourniquet or apply ice. You know, tourniquets really will do more harm than good because they'll actually kind of, uh, they say that it'll force the venom deeper into the tissue. So no need to do that. Also, you want to refrain from drinking alcohol or eating anything in the event that you're bitten. In the end, most bites are survivable if you can get to treatment within 12 to 24 hours. And you know, most deaths occur by people who refuse treatment or maybe they have some sort of allergic reaction or a weak immune system or some sort of a heart problem, some sort of uh, pre-existing condition that just the snake bite will complicate. Now you heard me speak earlier about a dry bite versus an actual envenomation or whatever you want to call it <laughs> versus actually being injected with venom. So how do you know the difference? You should know within about 10 minutes of being bitten if you were bitten with a dry bite or if you were actually injected with venom. If you start to feel a lot of a burning and a lot of pain at the place you were bitten you'll probably have some venom in there. And that's not good. You need to get the help. But in the end, it's just best to try to avoid getting bitten in general. So you know, just be aware of your surroundings. If you do see a snake, don't mess with it. Don't try to play Crocodile Dundee or uh, Crocodile Man or whatever and try to get the snake. You know, there's been a few stories and stuff going around in the news uh, lately of people who've gotten bitten by snakes and a lot of them are people trying to catch the snake or playing with the snake or uh, just wanting to impress their friends or they think it's something else or whatever. Just don't mess with them and most of the time they're not going to mess with you. <laughs> hey folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was valuable to you. And granted, this may not be an entertaining <laughs> or an inspiring video for you to get out there, but it hopefully did educate you so you can feel more confident when you do go out there about snake bites in general because they're really not that much to worry about. All right, thank you guys for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Feel free to check out my other adventures. I have a lot of fun on those adventure videos. That's the bread and butter of my channel. So check those out. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of good stuff out there to inspire you <laughs> to get out there. All right, folks, take care. Keep watching videos and keep getting out there yourself. All right, be good and God bless. See you in the next adventure.